What is good, everybody? It is your boy, JSM801. I am down here at Angelus. Guys, I am super pumped to bring you this video about a new product. This is Paintable Repair Filler. This is going to repair all your midsoles, your cuts in your uppers, gashes in your car seats. Multi-purpose use, guys. I am so, so excited about this product. It's easy to paint, it's easy to sand. Let's go ahead and show you guys what it does. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the first step in the first use of this. We are going to be fixing a cut in the upper. I know this happens by mistake, by accident, just wearing the shoe can cause creasing to where it cracks. So let's go ahead and get into it with step one. Step one is going to be prepping the leather. You're going to need sandpaper. It will vary depending on what leather you're working on or what material you're working on. So you might need to get two different grits, maybe three different grits, starting at a, maybe a 400 to an 800 and end with a 1500 grit. Once you're done with the sandpaper, you are going to be using Angelus D Glazer and you're just gonna take that and you're just gonna smooth it out. Make sure you're getting rid of any debris that's on the shoe or stuck to the leather and just making sure you're getting rid of that finish on top so it will allow this filler to bond to the leather so that way it's durable. You don't want this to re-crack on you. All right, step two guys is going to be applying the filler. One thing you need to keep in mind when you're applying the filler is that you do need to get the filler inside the gash. That way when you lay the leather back together that it creates a bond on both sides, not just a top layer. And depending on the gash size or the material you're working with, you might need to add one to two layers, maybe even a third. Just make sure that you keep them thin and smooth. That way it makes it easier when you go to sand it. All right, step three guys is going to be sanding. And again, this is going to vary depending on which material you are using. You're gonna to wanna to start with a lower grit and then slowly gradually go up to a higher grit to make sure that there's no rough patches on the leather. It comes out factory smooth and it's gonna be ready for paint. All right guys, the fourth and final step is going to be painting the filler. Now, when you add your first coat, whether you're painting or airbrushing, it might bring out the imperfections in your sanding that you didn't see before you applied the paint. You might need to add a little bit more sanding to it, uh, go back to step three, and, and sand it down just a little bit more before you do an extra coat of paint before you hit it with a, a finish. All right, guys, so that was the breakdown of the four steps on a rip or tear in the upper leather. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is dive in a little bit deeper and see how else we can use this product. Let's start with a midsole. All right, next I will be showing you how to repair damaged midsoles, whether it's a big gash like this caused by some crazy accident by you wearing them and not being careful, or if it's for all the customizers that have issues with getting the pitting out of midsoles when you're doing a repaint for a customer. So let's go ahead and get started and start taping it up. I'm gonna be using Angelus's vinyl red tape. In my opinion, this is the best tape for midsoles. It just blocks out paint. It leaves you with perfect lines just for some extra protection to make sure that this doesn't get any paint that I remove or damage any of this elephant print. I'm gonna take some of this masking tape and just put it over the top of this midsole just for prevention. Okay, now that I got it taped up, I'm gonna be taking the Angela sandpaper. I'm gonna start with a lower grit and move to a higher grit. So I'm gonna use the 400 and then I'll move up to the 800 and then I'll finish it off with the 1500. In between sandpaper, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a rinse with the glazer to make sure that I got all this debris out of the way. That way I can gauge whether I have sanded it enough. That is pretty smooth. It's starting to look really good. And now I will be filling this in with the filler. Just gonna be using stir stick. Gonna shorten this out that way. I can turn this sideways, use this edge just to get that as smooth as possible just to save myself from having to sand a bunch of unnecessary filler off. I'm gonna get this packed in there nice. Fill it all the way up to the top. And then I'm just gonna take this and I'm going to rub all that excess off for the first layer. Now this is probably gonna take two or three layers because this will shrink as it dries is it looks really smooth now and looks flush, but as it dries, it will shrink, causing me having to put another layer on top. So we're gonna go ahead and let that dry. So your dry time in between coats is gonna vary just due to the depth of the damage. And also one thing you wanna keep in mind is that the deeper the damage is, the more coats you are gonna have to do because you're gonna wanna do each layer 
super thin because what it does is it keeps it durable. If you just add one huge thick layer, chances are that it might crack, that it might not bond as well. So keeping your layers thin, always best. All right, so all I'm doing right now is just taping up the rest of the midsole uh, while this first coat dries using the red vinyl tape all along the bottom and then the top part with the masking tape. And then I will move over to the second part of the midsole that has been damaged to add the first coat. And then eventually we will be prepping this for paint and then adding a fresh layer of paint. And then of course, an Angelus finisher. All right, so that wrapped it up with the last coat of paint. So guys, super impressed with how easy this stuff is to use. Just one thing to keep in mind is let this dry thoroughly. Don't rush it. It'll be soft when you go to sand it. Make sure it dries thoroughly. I would wait two to three hours in between coats just to make sure that it's dry. But guys, stuff's amazing. So another thing that you can use this filler for is midsole craters. You know, it's pitting when you go to restore it. If you use acetone or if it's an older shoe and you use the glazer, you're going to start eating away at that midsole. So this is an amazing product to solve this problem. All right, so the midsole that I'm gonna be working on today is actually for a midsole swap for a shoe at a Fat Joe's personal collection. I'm gonna be using this filler to fill in all the pits right before I go ahead and put this onto the sole. So a lot of pitting you don't even notice until you go to put your first layer of paint on, which we have in this case. You can see it here, the damaged midsole. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start sanding this down. I'm gonna use just a high grit sandpaper. There's no need for me to rough up the surrounding parts, the parts that are not damaged. All right, now that we got it sanded, you're gonna take your microfiber rag and you're just gonna wipe down all that dust. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of this filler. I'm just going to use a spoon as an applicator and I'm just going to rub this in and then I'm just gonna rub this smooth to make it easier when I go to sand this off. And usually with pitting, it's only gonna take one coat to make sure that that comes out perfect when you add your second coat of paint. And because this is so thin, this is only gonna take five to 10 minutes to dry. All right, guys, this one is dry. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use a very high grit sandpaper, the 1500. And I'm gonna go over this before I add a layer of paint. I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe this off. Make sure that all that debris that I sanded down not sticking to the midsole. So when I go to add paint, there'll be no bumps. Just a nice smooth finish. Let's add some paint and let's see what it looks like. that dry in between coats. So now that I got the second coat of paint on, I can see where I had missed sanding some of that filler off. So what I'll do is let this cool down. I will hit it with a high grit sandpaper and then I will finish it off with one more coat of paint. All right, now that we have our final coat of paint on the midsole, you can go ahead and see the treated section versus the pre-treated section. And that was with one coat of the filler, a light sand, and two coats of paint. Got rid of all the pitting. So for the last part of this video, I'm gonna be walking you through how to use the filler to repair a torn leather seat, whether it be a car seat or a couch, and then we will color match it and make this thing look brand new. All right guys, so we went ahead and just pulled the headrest off of the couch. This can happen by putting a bike in the back of your car. I ship a lot of boxes out every day, so in the back of my headrest gets a lot of wear and tear just from the boxes sliding around. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna go ahead and do, just like in any case, is we're gonna wanna clean this with some deglazer before we put the filler down. All right, so now that I got this all cleaned off, I'm just gonna let it air dry and make sure all that chemical completely evaporates. That way it doesn't affect the bonding agents at all. So while that's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of the filler and I'm going to use some of this gray taupe. Um, it's a color that almost matches exactly. And if you're not working on a headrest or a piece of leather or a couch that's exactly white, you can go ahead and mix your color that best matches it with the actual filler. That way when you go to blend your paint, it's not gonna be so difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing this color with the actual filler and then I'll apply it to the headrest itself. All right guys, and another benefit of adding the paint in with the filler and mixing it is if any more damage gets caused back to the headrest, like you go ahead and put boxes back in after you've repaired it, it's not just going to rip that top layer of paint off and then expose white underneath. So once I mix this, 
and you scratch it again, it's going to remain the same color. All right, now that I got the filler mixed with the paint, I'm gonna go ahead and just start applying this. I'm gonna go through and make sure that I get it underneath the leather because I almost wanna make a patch on the underside of this as well, just for more durability. Once I get it all underneath the leather and make sure that I have enough to build that layer, now I'm just basically gonna spread this out to build a big enough layer on the top again for just more durability. I'm just gonna move this around to try to give it a little bit of texture. Now this is gonna vary. Um, getting texture, there's various ways. Every piece of leather has different texture. Um, so you're just gonna have to find the best method to fit your need. You can use a sponge, use a dab pad. What it comes down to is what your personal preference is. All right guys, I got this completely sanded. And again, I just wanna stress how important it is for you to wait till this is completely dried before you start sanding. I set this out in the sun for about a half an hour before I started sanding it just to kind of help it dry quicker. The next step I'm going to do is gonna be adding some more lightly with just any kind of tool, guys, just something to add some texture to it. I don't want it to be completely smooth. So all I'm gonna do is just take this plastic knife, put some on the tip and I'm just gonna dab it. Now I know it's not going to come out exactly the same just because I am using a putty versus natural grains in a leather, but I just didn't want it to be smooth. So I'm gonna go out, let this completely dry, set it in the sun, come back in about 20 to 30 minutes and then sand this without sanding it completely smooth and then I'll be ready for paint. I'm just gonna do a few coats. I will go heavy in the center, making sure that I cover up all this filler and then I'll blend it out to the sides. That way it ends up matching perfect and then I'll hit it with some matte finish just to color tone it and try to get it as perfect as possible. All right, guys, that is a wrap for this video. Um, just went through a few ways you can use this new product. Guys, it's midsoles, uppers on leather shoes, tumbled leathers, couches, sofas. Realistically, it's endless what you can use this stuff for. I appreciate you guys tuning in and go ahead and check out my page at JSM underscore 801 underscore customs. Take it easy guys, I appreciate you.